I'm Etta Rosa with Etta Rosa LLC. We are a paralegal virtual firm, but we also offer services um, in legal business. So we do consulting for law firms. Um, and today I'm going to talk about what a paralegal actually is and what type of services paralegals offer. So depending on the type of paralegal, because we have different levels of paralegals, you may have what I call the triple threat, which is the one that has plenty of experience. And by experience, I mean five plus. Um, on top of that, they have a degree in either legal studies or a paralegal program that's offered by the ABA or accredited by the ABA, which is the American Bar Association. I also have an article that they um, posted recently, so I'll post that down below in the comments so you can read that too. It gives you a really good idea as to why um, you should be using paralegal services, especially in times like weird times like this. So I'll post, I'll make sure to post that um, in the comments below. And you have one that just basically started as a receptionist and just worked their way up and just has plenty of experience. Um, and sometimes it's not even certified or it just has been in, in it for so long, they just know what they're doing, um, which is the most common I, I've seen anyway here in Florida. We see that a lot. We see a lot of paralegals that um, just, you know, start as receptionists and just work their way up as law firms through the law firm. So. You know, that's always great, too. There's no wrong or way, you know, wrong or right way. So I, I really, you know, as long as you know what you're doing, I feel then you are good. That's what makes you a good paralegal. As long as you know what you're actually doing and you know the ethics of being a paralegal and things like that. I think that's pretty much like the main point. Um, so now moving on to as to what do paralegals actually do? So paralegals do a lot of things. Um, they do anything from answering phone calls to scheduling to coordinating the attorney's um, calendar um, if they work in a law firm capacity. They also do drafting, which is our main responsibility, is actually drafting uh, pleadings, which are anything between a motion, notices, things like that. A uh, pleading is anything that has to go to the court um, whether it be electronic or physical, depending on what state you're in or what county you're in. Um, and they draft all of that. They, if it, they work under the capacity, obviously, of the attorney, they get the attorney's uh, confirmation and then they file it. If not, then they just give it to the attorney and the attorney either uh, um, files it or somebody else in the firm you know, files it for them. Um, we also do legal research for those pleadings. We do coordinations with the court as far as like hearings, um, mediations, depositions, all that good stuff. Um, but on top of all that, we basically just make sure that the cases are moving smoothly and assure, you know, the client and the attorney that everything is going where it needs to be going. Um, depending on what type of capacity the attorney utilizes the paralegal. Sometimes they are utilized um, in the strategy realm, which is where you sit down with the attorney and you strategize. Um, now, one little tidbit I will tell you is that paralegals cannot strategize directly with the person of the file. So they can brainstorm with the attorney because they're working what I would call under the license of the attorney, but we're not able to provide any strategy or any legal advice to a lay person. So any person that's included in the lawsuit or anything like that, we are not allowed to strategize with them or in any way provide them with legal advice unless you say per attorney so-and-so, this is happening. Um, but you as like an independent contractor, like in my case, obviously I would never tell a lay person anything about strategy or any ideas on how to move forward with the case. Um, that is against the paralegal ethics, whether you're licensed or not. Um, we all have to oblige by the paralegal ethics. Um, there's a lot of societies that certify paralegals. Um, in the state of Florida, there's the Florida Register Paralegal. Um, there's also Nationwide, which is the National Association of Legal Assistants. Um, there's a whole bunch of certified uh, programs that, that are offered so that the paralegal can get certified. I'll have a couple of those links as well if you're interested in getting certified or wanting to learn more about paralegals in general. So I'll also put that down below. Um, and every state has their own registered paralegal. So here in Florida, we have the Florida registered paralegal, but Georgia has it, California, New York, Chicago, 
All those states have their own individual, just because um, it varies state by state. So not every state has the same laws, right? So we all have to learn it. It's kind of like an attorney, if they're barred in multiple states, they have to take the bar of that state in order to um, be licensed in that state because again, every state is different. Every state has their different laws. That's a little bit about what paralegals do and it depending on how the how they are utilized, whether they're independent, whether they work under an attorney directly, you know, um, things like that, the, the, their responsibilities can vary. Now, the American Bar Association recently also passed the definition of a paralegal, which used to include legal assistance. And us paralegals that have been in the game for a long time knew that there was always a major difference between a legal assistant and a paralegal starting at the pay. <laughs> you don't get paid the same when it's a legal assistant. Um, legal assistants are usually what I call to be utilized as a almost like a receptionist capacity. So yes, you would answer the phones and everything like that, but you can also be utilized in scheduling um, hearings and things like that. But as far as like drafting uh, legal research, more of the nitty gritty strategizing with the, the attorney, I would say that's more of a paralegal responsibility. Um, it, the difference there is that one's a little more seasoned or well-versed when it comes to legal research. Um, I know a lot of firms use what they call law clerks and law clerks are basically most of the time are law students. Um, they're, they're already in law, enrolled in law school. They're either at the end of law school, the last year of law school, and they're about to graduate or they have graduated and they're studying to take the bar. So that's usually what a law clerk is and they are mostly utilized for, you know, the legal research and everything like that. But Paralegals also offer those services as well. And we also know how to do legal research, especially me. I've been in the business for, I don't even know, 16, 17 years now. I lost count. Um, so depending on all that good stuff, that's basically what it is. But if you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe, don't forget. And visit my website, www.edarosallc.com for more information. Have a good one, guys.